So um, this study lays on the fact that um, uh, we, in our practice, were commonly providing B12, folate, and B6 to our patients that they were treated with uh, levodopa in order to reduce the risk of uh, cardiovascular condition, especially um, on the homocysteine in patients that are using this particular medication. However, we also knew and we also know that the use of vitamin B12, folate, and B6, but in this case B12, is very important for potential uh, modifying somehow the risk of uh, memory decline and cognitive decline. We know that the lack of vitamin B12, for example, is the deficiency of vitamin B12 is associated to a possible form of memory decline. Therefore, it was seemed to be intuitive to us to look in our cohort, in our patient, and see whether or not there was a difference in the developing or uh, in the development of uh, uh, cognitive decline in Parkinson's disease patients that were indeed using B12 compared to one that were not using. And we, what we did, we look, we simply look at the at the at the levels, at the serum levels of vitamin B12 in patients that have Parkinson's disease. And, and we look and see if there was a risk of developing dementia among the patients that had higher, lower, or normal level of vitamin B12. Well, what we found, we found that uh, um, the presence of a higher level of vitamin B12 at the diagnosis, so when the, 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 the patient with Parkinson's disease was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So in other words, higher level when the disease is already started, maybe one, two, three years into the disease, is uh, associated with a reduction of the risk of having cognitive decline later, which is very important, don't get me wrong, that is not a very strong uh, uh, reduction uh, component that allows you to have a very strong reduction of the risk. But as a clinicians, we are taking that. If I'm able to reduce over a little bit the risk of my patients, that they, they have already a degeneration of the brain, which is Parkinson's disease. If I'm able to reduce a little the risk of cognitive decline, I'm very happy about that. And in addition, this uh, supplementation of uh, B12 and other cofactors is, is benign at the dose that we give. We are not giving mega doses. We are giving low doses. So I think it's important. Yeah, so I think that uh, dementia is a very common occurrence in Parkinson's disease. And uh, there's really not a lot of great treatments. There's obviously nothing that can be done to prevent it that we're aware of, at least um, that's clinically available as of now. And so we were looking at other ways that, um, you know, what are some simple things that we can look into that might help prognosticate for patients when they're diagnosed with dementia. Say They'll say, hey, doc, what's my life going to look like in five years? Am I going to still be independent? Am I going to recognize my family? Things like that. And so I think this data and our study helps give um, neurologists and even primary care physicians when they're diagnosing patients with dementia, maybe an, or patients with Parkinson's disease, uh, maybe another tool to say, you know, things maybe are not going to be too bad five, 10 years down the road, or, you know, maybe things are going to be, there's a higher chance that you might have dementia uh, in five years. And so it's important to kind of start looking at the important things to you in life and how, and how you kind of want to live your life and things you want to get done. Um, and so I think that this, this is a small study that helps provide some of that prognostic inf information for patients. Um, and I think it gives us as clinicians something exciting to look into in the future as to how we may help kind of build on this or if there's anything we can do to modulate this effect um, that may help patients even more.